Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, breaking through strength plateaus, video number seven, improving and recalibrating your technique, a real big ego check this video. So there are two technique problems that are very related that are able to cause plateaus in strength gain. The first one is like your technique just sucks to begin with. You never learned it properly. You, uh, you know, let's say you kind of round back everything. You round back all your deadlifts. You never learn how to arch or contract in a bench. You never learned how to brace in a squat. And that you just like, no one ever told you. And that's just, that's the deal, right? Problem number two is that you used to have way better technique, but over time your technique has degraded. Often it's because you're going heavier and heavier, which is a good thing, but you're starting to number chase and you're doing kind of whatever it takes during the lift to get the weight up. And sometimes your technique slips up and you're like, ah, whatever, I'll just, I just have to get this doing. And at some point you keep doing that and you keep practicing with this technique, but now the technique is off. So you're actually learning and relearning and relearning worse and worse and worse technique. And months or years later, your technique has big fundamental errors that your body really likes to do, habitually does, and is actually kind of good at milking as much as it can strength-wise out of that really crappy technique, which is to say not the most strength it can have if you had good technique. So both are problems, right? And your technique is now so bad because you have a plateau from potentially poor technique that it's actually limiting your progress. There's a few ways in which this can express itself just as examples. So first, nobody remotely close to your individual muscular strength for let's say your chest, your front delts, and your triceps can actually protract at the top of the bench. Like in order to be able to take the 315 you want to bench and do this with it, you have to have a max bench of like 365. You have a max bench of like potentially 315. So when you get 315, you try to press it and you try to do this shit with it because you always do. It just doesn't work and you're not getting the lifts. If you knew how to arch and retract, you could actually lock it out and get it, but you're not doing that. You say, well, I just bench with a different style, but they're objectively better and worse styles. There's a reason almost every power lifter, as much as they can, tries to arch and retract. It reduces the distance. It turns the sternal packs in. It allows you to do the lift probably more safely and exert more force with the right uh, a pattern. There's less degrees of freedom for your shoulders moving around, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So because you continue to protract, you may really be limiting how much more you're able to press unless you get wildly stronger individual muscles, which could take a long time before you get hurt, of course, because protracting all the time at the top of benches is just generally not a good idea. Example number two, nobody with your leg strength or almost no one with your actual quad strength can squat the weights you're trying to squat without a proper squatting brace, making sure to bear down and really get everything around your core nice and braced big air and stuff like that. Because you're not doing that either properly or at all, even if your legs get much stronger, I mean, they would have to like get one and a half times stronger for you to squat. You're supposed to be able to squat without a brace. You could easily just learn how to brace and get much better at it and then to smash other squat numbers. But because you're not doing that, you're really pulling yourself away from what your potential could be and it could be stalling out for long periods of time doing that. Third example is unless you widen your sumo stance, you're just kind of pulling essentially conventional just with your hands nominally inside your knees. Your leverages aren't much better. Sumo is a huge advantage because it leverages you better. It gets you lower to the ground. You used to pull with a wider setup, but you kind of reverted to a narrower one and you comparing your old PRs and like, man, I used to hit more sumo. How come these weights are hard? I think I got stronger, but I guess it didn't. Well, your techniques started to suck. So if you could go back to your older, wider stances and express that strength potential fully, you could actually hit PRs. But because your technique, as your muscles have gotten strronger over time, your technique has degraded over time, just out of like sheer, just not paying attention to it, your lifts can be rather stagnant and thus you you have a plateau, bad deal nobody wants. Now, what fundamentally we have to do, don't worry, you have a multiple step process of how to do this in a sec, is your body's used to dog shit technique and we have to realign it to do good technique. Same nervous system, same muscles, same bones, same you, but expressing that strength differently, which is to say more efficiently. The problem is the transition from doing it this way to the way you're supposed to do it means there is a difference there. And your body has gotten really good used to your shitty technique, which means it occupies a local maximum. If you move and make your technique even shittier, you get weaker. 
if you move and make your technique better, more in the direction of where you're going, you temporarily get weaker. Why? Because your bodies are really used to doing it in this one shitty way. Even if your shittiness is reduced, in many cases, that reduction alone causes a difference. And your nervous system, your muscle architecture is all aligned after weeks and weeks and weeks of doing it this specific way. And even though it's not the objectively best way, because your body's used to it, any deviation will cause a dip to kind of a local minimum where you fucking suck for a while. Now, as you continue to teach your body the better and better and better technique, it floats back up to the local maximum and global maximum of this sort of topography here to where you're actually as strong as you could be. But this little journey, which is displayed on the graph, takes you into a dip which almost no one ever voluntarily goes into. Some guy at the gym says, hey man, your bench is looking good, but you gotta do this more, not this. You're like, all right, sweet, he's big, he benches more than you. You do it next time and you fucking blow at it and you bench less because you're not used to it. You're just gonna be like, there's an idiot. Like I gave him the wrong advice. I'm just going back to what works for me. And if you ever see this on a YouTube comment, Reddit forum, anything, guy saying like, yeah, I tried X, Y, Z, but it didn't work. I'm just going back to what works for me. There's a good chance that they just didn't work and the advice sucked or whatever. It wasn't good for them. This is a good chance they just didn't give it enough time to actually express its full abilities, right? There's people that are like, yeah, I tried calorie balance, but it didn't work for me. Like, oh, sweet. You're the only person that violates the laws of thermodynamics, right? Shit like that. So ironically, your brain and body is optimized to do shit technique. And in order to have to get better, you'll have to get worse first. Bad news, there's no way around that. Good news, there's a trick to where you don't have to see yourself as weaker. And here it is. Here's the fix. Point number one, your technique sucks. Accept that fact. Swallow your pride. Commit yourself to doing what it takes to get it better, right? You could be watching a shitload of powerlifting videos and be like, everyone benches different than me. Fuck them, they're all idiots. Well... They're stronger than you, so maybe you suck. Also, it's not just how everyone does it. You could just read an article by like Greg Knuckles on Stronger by Science and analyzes the biomechanics of how to bench properly, and you're like, huh, I do like three of those four things wrong. Or maybe the yeah, Greg's just not that smart. He is that smart. And there's not really disagreement. There's a couple of fundamentals in benching that pretty much everyone has to do, and you're clearly not doing them. Look, when I first started lifting, fucking God, my technique was just broken. It was wrong in every possible level. And I actually had to do this specific thing with my bench and squat and deadlift at one point in my uh, late teens, early 20s, for sure. So you're not the first person to have to do this. And remember, pat yourself on the back because you're smart and you're patient and you're hungry and you want to do the right thing in the long term so you can be super strong. So don't worry about your numbers now. Accept it. You suck. Now let's do something to change. Point number two, what you do is put good, solid, overloading compound accessory lifts first into your plan, into the first thing you do every session that you show up. So for example, now you should be technically good at them. Okay, ones in which your technique doesn't suck, hopefully, or sucks less, right? And a lot of times, a lot of people are actually really good at the accessories because they're not ego-driven, uh, and they're really bad, bad technique at their prime lifts because they're like, ah, I just have to do what it takes, and their technique goes to hell. So push those lifts instead of, remember, shifting the strength, the core strength lifts you want to improve, the ones you have shitty technique on, we'll put them aside for now. You're going to do these assistance lifts first, and you are going to attach your ego to them and with good technique and never letting it degrade, you are going to get them stronger over multiple months. For example, instead of competitive benching, you're going to do close grip benches. Good technique, progressively getting stronger. High bar squatting instead of low bar competitive squat. Stiff-legged deadlift instead of a regular deadlift, so on and so forth, right? If you're overhead pressing and your technique suck, standing barbell press, go to seated press, go to seated dumbbell press, something like that, right? Now, you have an outlet for your ego by which it, with good technique on these other lifts, which aren't the problem for you, can still plug away. And you could still feel like you're fucking hitting it hard and heavy. You're making some kind of progress, damn it. So someone's like, hey, you hit a bench PR in a while? You're like, no, I'm not focusing on that right now, but I hit a crazy close group bench PR last week and the one before, blah, blah. All good. All very good, right? Because let's be honest, I could have told you just fucking swallow your ego and do technique only sessions for two months. Nobody's going to do that shit. I probably wouldn't do that shit. So now that you're doing that, that's great. Now, in each of these sessions... Take your shitty technique lift that you're trying to work on and do it later in each session and for weeks at least, you're going to only do technique work, which means sets of three to six reps, but at a three to six RPE. Oh my God, easy as 
fuck. Like, it just barely feels a little heavy. Like, grandma couldn't lift it, but maybe on a good day. And then you work with stellar technique. Remember, technique practice, you don't just get through it. Every time you set up, boom, and all the way up and down, exactly like it's supposed to be done. And if you need help figuring out how it's supposed to be done, watch videos, chat, chat with other people who are good at powerlifting or weightlifting or strength sport, anything you want. Work on your technique, and those technique sessions are for you to maybe experiment with some different techniques. Really work it in until you have a real stable, new, good technique with really easy loads, not challenging. After some number of weeks, it could take months, but it'll probably take like weeks. Like, I don't know, like three to six weeks usually, and you feel pretty goddamn solid. But you're not challenging yourself yet. You're only challenging yourself with the assistance lifts. Now, point number four. Once this happens and your technique looks much better on these very light lifts, you deload, et cetera, and your next mesocycle, you still do these lifts later. You still put in your close grip benches and stuff first. But right after you do your core lifts, which you're really bad at technique-wise, it doesn't have to be all of them. If you're a squat and deadlift or good technique, just bench is the problem. You should do this on bench workouts. Now you're doing that lift, let's say bench press, your core lift second after close grip work or whatever you're doing first. But now you start to do them for sets of three to six at a seven to nine RP. So it's conventional, hard training, with the good technique that you learned earlier, it's just second exercise, so it's not going to be super crazy PRs, which is good because you offload your PR demons in the first exercise, and in the second, you go hard and get a good training response, and your technique starts to calibrate into actually being something you practice with heavy loads. It's a very, very different proposition to do good technique with light loads. Some of you guys that have shitty technique right now, <laughs> I said that all wrong. I didn't mean to insult you guys. If you have shitty technique with a, a certain lift heavy, some people, if you take 100 pounds off the bar, they have stellar techniques. They fucking know what they're doing, but they're either not used to exerting that technique at heavy loads, or they just give up and just grind ego shit. So what you need to do for like a mesocycle is have that compound accessory lift first, have the core lift heavy now second, but heavy with good technique to get you really refined and practicing. And then after a mesocycle of that, one to two months of training, deload, et cetera, switch to using those old movements first, those core movements first, and then continue to drive up loads with your new good technique. Seven to nine RP, the usual, and voila, you're very likely to start hitting PRs again if your, plat uh, if your plateau was actually from a technical error. Holy shit, we just solved that problem. Now... Here's shit not to do before I let you guys go. I hate saying that. I used to be a professor. I guess I still am a professor. Good God. Uh, the let you guys go thing is like when students are itching to leave class and you're like, before I let you go, I got to say this. You guys can click off of this fucking stupid video anytime you want. So uh, things not to do, which are super fucking tempting, which many, many, many people do. And you'll see them do it around you when you're training. Don't just like do some technique work for a few sessions. Like guys will literally do this. They'll hit their heavy lifts as dog shit as ever. Then they'll reduce like 100 pounds off the fucking bar and they'll do like technique work. And it looks pretty good. It may be even getting better. And you're like, so I see your technique work's going good. They're like, yeah, it's pretty sweet, right? I'm like, huh? Isn't the purpose of technique work to actually make it so that your heaviest lifts have that good technique? And they're like, uh-huh. Like, do you have a plan for when this is going to happen? Or are you just like practicing something properly now uh, and – to never have to implement it in real life. It's like, you have a shitty gymnastics routine, you're doing everything wrong, and your coach is like, you suck. And then you're off to the side practicing another routine, which is flawless, and they're like, why don't you do that for your competition? You're like, nah, that's not, nah, nah, I really like this other routine I'm doing. You're like, All right, so, you know, just adding technique or a doesn't address the problem that you're continuing to practice the heavy lifts with shitty technique. It's like learning the proper way to speak a language while you're still, you know, with your friends talking in all kinds of crazy ass slang and then teaching you the wrong shit because you're not even native to that language. You got to stop practicing wrong. You have to stop practicing wrong. Adding in the right shit doesn't fix the problem. I'll make the worst analogy I've ever made. Maybe there's a stretch. You know, if you have a problem where you're physically eating too much shit, it's not a matter of solution to simply eat ice cream with the shit. You're like, it's not all bad now. Isn't that right, ladies? And they're like, oh, my God, are you eating shit with ice cream in it? Stop eating shit and just eat the ice cream. I'll make a deal. You don't even have to eat ice cream. Just stop eating shit for the love of God. Stop doing bad technique. If you try to smash PRs again, even if in that technical training you're feeling your swag, your body will often, 
almost always revert back to its shitty technique because you never excise that from your repertoire. Your brain continually does what it continually does. You will revert back unless you clean the slate and get the fuck away from heavy lifting so you can purge those, essentially those memories, those motor patterns from your system for weeks, if not months, right? Or, or just keep using shit technique Keep looking for quick fixes, make a lot of excuses, keep sucking, and you'll have tons of friends and maybe even a girlfriend. Folks, see you next time. Your mission, until I see you, is to get a girlfriend.